It is January 6, 2023, and you're watching The Code Report. 2022 was a rough year for Web3, and 2023 is already off to a rocky start. Like most of you out there, I became hella pressed after seeing my TurboChad role model, Logan Paul, be accused of scamming his audience with his CryptoZoo NFT project. If you're not already familiar, CoffeeZilla did a three-part series that presented a ton of evidence about how the CryptoZoo team made millions of dollars magically disappear. In all fairness, nobody could have possibly seen this coming. To any sane person, Person, digital eggs that hatch into JPEGs of puggerflies and pandarillas seems like a perfectly sound investment. Shut up and take my money! And to his credit, Logan Paul never actually sold his tokens or made any money from this project, although the shady crypto bros he hired did. It's a crazy story, but in this video, I want to explain how it all works from a software engineering perspective by reverse engineering it, so that one day you too can mint your own shitcoin and sell worthless JPEGs to differently abled kids on the blockchain. And you might be surprised at how easy it actually is. And there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with this tech beyond just NFT scams. So everything on the blockchain is public by design, and all the code for projects like CryptoZoo are compiled as smart contracts. And that means we can easily access its source code from websites like BSC Scan. This project is built on top of the Ethereum blockchain and uses the Solidity programming language, which is an object-oriented language like C++ designed for writing smart contracts. If we inspect this code, you'll notice the first interface that it implements is ERC20, which is basically just your own cryptocurrency built on top of Ethereum. In this case, it's the Zoo token. Now, the other side of the equation is an ERC721 contract, which generates a non-fungible token to represent the various images in CryptoZoo, which you can think of as digital Pokemon cards, but more interactive thanks to the code in this contract. Like, you can hatch an egg to turn it into a base animal, then with a technique known as copulation, you can combine two animals into a freakish hybrid. Bruh. Now, depending on how rare the offspring is, it will yield the Zoo token to your wallet on a daily basis. And the contract also forms an auction house where these tokens can be traded. Now this code was generated with a tool called Open Zeppelin, which provides industry standard templates for these contracts. In fact, they have a wizard where you can generate almost everything you need without ever having to write a single line of code. Another interesting thing to point out is that the actual images for the NFTs are not stored on the blockchain. Instead, they live in a decentralized file system called IPFS, or Interplanetary File System, which is connected back to the NFT via its ID. Now that you know how to write a smart contract, you might be wondering what you should do with it. The next step is to compile it and deploy it to the blockchain. There are many tools that can help you do that, like Hardhat and Truffle for JavaScript development, or there's the Remix IDE that can take care of it entirely from the browser. Now the final step is the front end. We'll need a website where our victim valued community members can purchase these NFTs and breed them into these horrible monstrosities. Like most Web3 apps, it's built with ReactJS, but the secret sauce is a library called Ethers.js, which allows allows you to connect to a deployed smart contract, and connect to a user's wallet with browser plugins like MetaMask, which itself provides this Ethereum object on the window, facilitating secure transactions in your app, or DAP, or DApp if you prefer. And that's how CryptoZoo works in a nutshell. When it comes to the scam, it really has nothing to do with the underlying technology. The problem is that I trusted Logan Paul to take my hard-earned money to the moon, without any kind of insurance or protection. And now, I have to have a very difficult conversation with my wife about why our kids can't go to college. This is been the code report. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.